So then I come across this um, article by VK4YE, which is a NFED five band antenna. It's 25 metres long. It'll get you on the air without an ATU on 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. Okay. I, his SWR measurements differ a little bit than what I got, okay. but that might be the way that I did the coil, and you could probably experiment a little bit with the coil and see how you go. So basically what happens is to add 80 metres, you basically have a uh, half-wave antenna on 40 metres. Okay. So about 20 metres of wire. Yep. You add a loading coil, mm -hmm. okay. and then you add a small tail onto the end, yep. and that gives you 80 metres. Okay. Um, there's some drawbacks with that, which I'll show in a later slide. Okay. Um, but basically, the loading coil in this case, and I found a couple of different loading coil values. There was 70 microhenries, there was 110 microhenries, there was 50 microhenries, and they were all sort of pretty variable. had different <laughs> different tail lengths. So it's pretty forgiving. You can okay. you can play around with it and and use what you've got. I think is is cool. is the basis. And I think the lower value loading coil you put in. Um, obviously you'll get to a point, but um, you get more bandwidth um, as a sure. result if you don't put as much um, inductance on the end. Okay. So at 40 metres, the loading coil uh, impedance is quite high, so that basically disconnects the rest of the antenna, so yep. it doesn't affect anything um, above 40 metres. So basically the antenna looks like this. Uh, you can see there, so there's a... Um, uh, C off to the right is that short tail. There's the loading coil. Uh, B is your normal half wave, or B and A, sorry, added together. Okay. Um, in this case, he's got the the this box mounted on the on the pole. On the pole. Yep. And then there's the little common mode current um, ballon as well. Yep. And that has to be placed at least point zero, uh, zero point zero five wavelengths down the coax. Surprise, surprise. Don't have it any closer, because otherwise then it's ineffective. Yep. So, so that becomes your counterpoise, yes, basically. Yes, yes. So that section of coax becomes your counterpoise, okay. and theoretically everything past that should not be yeah. part of your counterpoise, but you still get a little bit of common mode current. Um, okay. I, I get a little bit, but it's not too bad. Okay, okay. Um, cool. So next slide. Yes. Yeah, so this is what I built. So I took Ben's design, and I wanted slightly higher power because I didn't yeah. want to use it for QRP antenna. Yeah. So I used FT two forty dash forty three. I think. Yeah, that looks yep, about right. Yep. Yep. Toroids. Uh, so there's two of them there. Oh, on top of each other. On top yep. of each other. Okay. Uh, you can go three if you really want Ooh. QRO. Um, <laughs> but that 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 there should be good to. 200 watts SSB yep. yeah, or something like that. In a nice waterproof um, case. Yeah, so uh, you can see there I mounted an eye bolt on the top so I could support it. Um, okay. So I just, uh, on the left there, you can see it supported. There's the rope which goes off to um, one mount, um, one tie-off point yep. uh, to the egg insulator and then the, the box just hangs off mm. that. Mm -hmm. um, then Toro goes off to a bolt on the left-hand side, top, okay. top left-hand side. Um, so that's where your antenna connects, and then on the bottom you can see the SO239 with the little 2kV 100, p uh, 100 puff capacitor. Okay. So it's, yeah, 2kV two, two yep. um, cap. So that should uh, take care of that voltage issue that we were talking about before. Well and truly. Yeah. Well and truly. Um, you can also see just on that left-hand picture, which is uh, an add-on after I'd actually taken the photo on the right, there's a little banana connector for a counterpoise. So I okay. did I did experiment yeah, with yeah, the yeah. counterpoise. Um, I don't know if I put it in the slides, but I will talk about what I did with that. Okay, next one. Yeah. So in this next slide, this is the loading coil. So it is basically a 25 millimeter former with 120 turns of one millimeter enameled copper wire. Okay. I wound that by hand. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> have. I didn't have a winding machine. Um, but oh. I have seen. I have seen people use um, larger formers, so 50 millimeter okay. diameter. And oh, less turns. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, and instead of using enamel wire, you could use insulated wire. Yeah, 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 you yeah. could um, also use a smaller form and more turns if you really wanted to. Yeah. Um, but this is the one that I come up with. And you can see all the masking tape that I use to keep the yep. turns together and make it look as neat as possible. And then on the right, I've got two egg insulators yep. so that I'm taking the strain off the... Cool. the um, the uh, yeah, lugs, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You heat shrink that as well. How, how heavy? No, was that? so I didn't heat shrink it. I used, um, I didn't have any that was that size, but I used um, amalgamating, amalgamating yeah. tape. But right. you can, you can okay. use glue line heat shrink if you okay. like. 
Um, it's probably not really that important, but um, it just keeps it yeah, keep keeps it tidy. Um, how heavy is it? Yeah. It's quite. It's fairly light when you pick it up. Okay. When you string it up yeah. in the air, yeah. it gets heavier. Um, but that's what the egg insulators are for. And all I've got on either side there is just a couple of small cable ties. Yeah. Okay. So that okay. just ties it that's back and just relief. and yeah. just yeah, use a bit of strain relief and just um, a bit of rope between the two egg insulators. And so oh, cool. so down uh, the bottom left hand corner, you can see the. Um, Balan box or the Unan, sorry, yep. not the Balan, the Unan, yeah. unbalanced, unbalanced. Yes. Um, goes up to that tree. It goes over the top of that, or well, the dead tree at yep. uh, the front there, and then it goes down to the far tree, which is well, at the loading coil end. So, so a bit of an inverted sort of V. It's almost, it's almost an inverted V. So the center of the antenna is almost exactly in the middle. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, you could uh, you could lift it higher and make it an inverted L or any shape yep. that you like. Okay. So it's very cool. it's very good. Cool, cool. Um, yeah. And we'll just go, go back. back. So this is the common mode char uh, current. Oh, sorry, that was common me. mode current choke that I use. So basically, all I did was uh, FT one forty, yeah. and I just did. I think it's eight turns. Okay. Uh, is it eight? One, two, three, four. It might be five turns. However, amount of turns you can fit through. Yep. Um, no, it's not eight turns. It's eight cores. I think it's five turns through yeah. each one. RG58? Yeah, it's just RG58. Yep. And that box is waterproof, but it doesn't get wet. But um, basically, I just made yeah. sure that it was okay. waterproof so that no water got in. Cool. Um, now, this this was interesting because I experimented with the counterpoise. And this is 10 metres from the feed point. Okay. So it's not 4.2 metres from the feed point. Okay. Um. What I did was I did put this at 4.2 metres from the feed point and the SWR on the higher bands went up. Went up, yeah. 20 yeah. metres especially went up and okay. I'm, it went from, I think it was, you, we'll see the SWR measurements later, but it was a lot higher. Then what I did was I moved this further down the feed line, uh, what was it, yeah, 10 metres, 30 feet from the feed point and the SWR went down. It didn't affect any of the lower bands, okay. which was okay. interesting because I don't. I didn't go any shorter than that point. Yep. O five. Yep. Uh, and then what I did was once I put it ten meters from the feed point, I started to experiment with uh, a counterpoise wire. Okay. So I did the same thing as you. I tried point yeah, yeah. o five. I tried a quarter wavelength, and the counterpoise. It didn't. It di it didn't do anything on the high bands. Um, the coax just seemed to work fine. Yeah. Um, and the other thing to note about counterpoise is, is that 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 portion of the antenna radiates. Yes. So your coax does radiate. Yep. That's, yes. That short Most bit. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, if you did use it, I mean, it doesn't radiate a lot, but um, uh, I just. It, it's part of the antenna. It is yeah, part it of the is antenna. Part of the antenna. So I just I just screwed on the counterpoise and I just had it draped across the yep. across the grass and okay. that was it. I didn't sort of have it elevated up or anything. It went so the first thing that I did was I made everything a little bit longer. Yep. So I always make everything longer. Yep. The first bit that I trimmed was the forty the half wave section, the forty meter section. Yep. Okay. And then I trimmed that for the frequency that I wanted, which okay. was seven point one okay. megs. And then every harmonic after that is is that sets every other harmonic yep. basically sure. correct so i cut the seven meg portion first and then i went and and trimmed the tail right for okay. the 80 meter section yep. okay because the problem is if you trim the tail too short it's and you don't trim the 40 meter section yeah if you trim the 40 meter section afterwards then your 80 will be ah uh, of course yeah, yeah yeah so um it was way too long so in the end i got i got a um 1.3 SWR at 3.62 megs. Got to be happy with that. And the reason I picked 3.62 was so that it would cover the portion of band that I wanted because mm. the problem is at a 1.5 SWR, the bandwidth is only 30 kilohertz. Yeah, okay. And at 3 to 1, which is most tuners in in radios, yeah, will tune right. 3 to 1, yep. it's 110 kilohertz. Yeah, okay. which is it's not too bad but it won't cover the cw yeah. portion and the mm. top end of 80. yeah um obviously if you hook up 40 meters of wire you'll be able to cover yeah. the whole 80 meter band almost um but it's yeah. just that loading coil that limits that okay sure um the other thing i noticed too was the more turns that i had so if i i, I tried a i tried a 36 to one yeah i tried a 49 to one yeah and i tried a 64 yep. to one 
the higher the turns ratio, the lower the SWR was that, on the lower band. That's right. And that the BK the 2IL, I think I based that design off, yep. uh, yeah. actually says if you want it to perform better at the lower bands, add more turns. So yeah. what I, I what I did was I went a little bit more than 64 to 1. Okay. I wound some more turns on. 28 to 1. And I, I had I had a I had a bit of a compromise because you get to a point where twenty meters actually it's, 20, it's always twenty meters, twenty yeah. meters starts to get worse. <laughs> yeah. So this was the compromise. I I could I could get eighty meters all the way down to one to one, yep. but then twenty meters was it's, starting to get yeah, high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, then so uh, the forty meters ended up being seven point one three megs, which was again one point three to one, which was good and that covered cool. two hundred and seventy kilohertz of the whole nice. the whole forty meter band. Yep. Which you'd expect. Yep, uh, that's under one point five to one. Twenty meters was two to one. And I couldn't so get nice. it yeah, and I couldn't get it any better. But the interesting thing, which I'll get to in a minute actually no, I'll I'll continue okay. on. Um, 18 megs, which is um, 17 meters was two point six to one, which is which is good because um, it's not a direct harmonic, so you wouldn't really expect anything better. Yep. Um, so the 1.5 SWR bandwidth is not applicable. Uh, 21 megs is one to one. Nice. So so 15 meters is yeah. one to one, and that's one meg yeah, of yeah. bandwidth. So that's great. Fantastic. Um, 12 meters is 2.2. Yep. So again, um, not really a harmonic. So yep. um, yeah. that's all you can expect. 10 meters was 2.2 across the whole band. Okay. Yeah. So from 28 well, you, to 30 you, megs. You start to lose your effectiveness of the toroid at that higher due to the mix. Possibly, yes. And the other thing that I didn't experiment with was different cap values. I just yeah. put the 100 puff cap in. Yeah. It, it, it's certainly weaker at the 10 meter band. Mm. Um, that's where, again, with Justin doing his oh, variable cap thing, it makes correct. a significant difference. And if you, that's right, if you adjust the cap, um, if your cap, um, value changes then uh, oh and the reason why you put the cap in there is to compensate for the higher bands that's right. correct so um, makes no difference down low right? no so very so I used a hundred puff in there and that seemed that was what everyone was using and I didn't experiment anymore but because my tuner can tune three to one I didn't really care I just yeah. yep so certainly the 100 puff was the best compromise yep. Yep. for the kit to keep most people happy. Okay. And the mismatch, like you, might, like you go, oh, but 2.2 two, two to 1, the mismatch is you're, you're, only, you're losing hardly anything in power um, dissipation. Correct. The other thing which I also... Uh, you do also with the toroid itself, the losses in the... Yes. At those high Actually, rates. the other good thing too is, is if you stack two toroids yep. on one another, uh, they're more efficient. Okay. So mm, okay. um, there was there's a um, there's a slide deck by someone on NFEDS and I uh, uh, Steve Dick K one RF I think yep. okay and he goes on to say about if you stack two it goes from I think sixty five percent efficiency to eighty yep. percent efficiency if you wow. stack three it gets up to eighty eight percent efficient or something like that it's also worth noting yeah, that works. Owen Duff, hmm. Owen Duffy um, has done quite a bit of work in. Um, measuring the losses mm. of these particular of the ferrite, yeah. 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 So it really makes a difference what kind of ferrite you actually use. Um, so going down the bottom, so then, uh, so that, they're the amateur band. So I decided I'd find where all the dips were, okay. the lowest dips. Sure. So obviously, lowest dip three uh, eighty meters. Um, next dip was um, forty meters. Yep. But then there was a dip at thirteen point five mix, which was one point two to one. Which is just lower than twenty meters, which yeah, I thought yeah. was weird because there's no direct harmonic relationship Between going on those. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one point two to one. Then obviously you got fifteen meters, yep. one to one, yep. and then you've got uh, twenty-seven megs, which was one point seven, which it was <laughs> didn't really make much difference. But the 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 thirteen point five meg one was an interesting That's, thing. Yeah. Very interesting. So I thought, well, how can I fix that? How can I make the SWR lower? on 20 meters and I had a chat to a few different guys that were playing with NFEDs and one and there was one one guy made a suggestion put a trap in um, into the into the line yep. so that at 14.2 megs at that it'll trap it but then the other thought that I had was why not do a sort of a mini loading coil and measure where that voltage uh, peak is 
on the half wavelength of yeah. wire twenty meters. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just put a small just just um okay. wind, wind, where, where the actual peak is. Wind, yeah. wind the yep. um the wire that you're using yeah. at the peak and theoretically you should be able to see the SWR come down at that point. So I'm going to experiment with that okay. next and see what it does. Um, and the other thing to mention is if you do use a 40 metre length of wire, so a half wave on 80, then the 80 metre portion becomes the fundamental. Yeah. And that means that you can get an antenna which will work on 80, 40, mm. 30... 10, yeah. 20 uh, almost every amateur band yeah. from, from on there up because yeah, yeah. because three megs is is it just puts you in the right place multiply it up many many times yeah. will get you in the right spot so okay. if you want to if you want the ultimate um all band hf antenna then if you've got 40 meters of room uh, hey yeah. fun, fun fact i know with uh, i think i mentioned last time the end fed we have our so the club room is one sixty meters. Yep. It turned six meters with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Murray was using. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. The other thing to note too about NFEDs, and you just reminded me yeah. with one sixty. Yeah. And it was in this slide deck that I saw. If you use uh, now, I have, I, I'd have to test it on mine with the loading core. I'm not sure if it would work. If you create a little adapter kit, so so basically your antenna connects in here and your coax uh, connects in here. If you can create a little adapter whereby your um, coax coming in has a little jumper to the antenna yeah. and you bypass the unin, yeah. and then the ground of the coax you go into a ground rod or some sort of yep. radial, small. Yeah. it doesn't have to be big, small radial system, if the antenna is resonant on 80 metres, you can use that as a quarter wave on 160. Excellent. Well, um, thank you very much. No worries. That's... Um, I, and Great work, guys. St like, stay yeah. tuned, <laughs> because <laughs> this is not the end. No. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah. Um, fantastic.